There we are. And I have a few cards to share with you guys. And hopefully I have them in the correct envelopes. Yes, this one I do. <laughs> this one is from Julie Martin. Isn't that pretty? She has a lot of uh, neat glimmery things. These are nice uh, copper gold leaves. That is from the, I happen to have it sitting here, Splendid Thoughts Bundle. I'm always trying to find some things with the Splendid Thoughts Bundle that I like. I haven't, um, I haven't done too much of it because I just, I don't know, but that's a good one, huh? All right, and then we have, I think this one was from Bonnie. I think, I could totally be wrong. This could also be from, uh, no, no, it is Bonnie. All right, that's pretty, isn't it? Then we have this cutie, look at it. It's gnomes. You guys, it's gnomes. How cute is that? And I think this one was from Nichelle. Of course it was from Nichelle, right? She's my gnomey pal. And then this one was from Sherry Miller. Look at how cute this card is. And look, she even has some twine that she's done up in a braid for her hair. How cool is that? And then the little flip flops down inside. <laughs> it is very cute. Life is simple, just add water. How fun is that, right? I was just thinking, you know, I have my uh, make a card, send a card group. And I'm trying to decide what I should do. I mean, I just, I have so many things I want to play with. Yeah, it is, Char, isn't it? such a cute card. Um, but I'm just not sure what I want to do. Ugh, I just have so many things and I'm thinking, oh, I'd like to use this, I'd like to use that, you know. And um, it's just like, oh, gosh. Okay, so what is going on? Oh, you know what, you guys? Remember I used last week these this washi tape? And you know, you open it up and then it's like, okay, what do you do with it? I just happen to have a piece of this uh, ribbon. It's one of the um, last year's in color ribbons, which on the weekly deals for this week, this is the last week of the deals, um, it, um, it's perfect for wrapping up your washi tape. And so now if I want the black washi tape, I can just take it and spin it and I can get pieces of it. And so it's it's a good way to take care of that. You know what I mean? So yeah, some of these ribbons are on the uh, weekly deals and a nice discount. So yeah, so the weekly deals was just about done. They were just doing that each week during the month of September. And then we also had that perfect partners promotion, which is all this week. Oh, and so that's to think if you have some of those stamp sets that they created dies for. This is the last uh, few days of this month to get those. Woo! Yikes! Okay, so you are you know we are doing coloring, coloring techniques. So let's talk about it now. Whenever you're going to be doing some coloring techniques, you guys, you want to think about using the right kinds of cardstock. The, that right kind of ink because with Stampin' Up, different inks do different things, okay? So like for instance, I'm going to be doing watercolor pencils for this first card. And because I'm using watercolor pencils, I need to use a permanent stamp pad ink. Stays on is a permanent ink it will not, <laughs> it will not bleed when I put the water to it, okay? So any type of water coloring or um, blending with the blending uh, pens, you will want to use Stazon, okay? 
All right, so let's talk about our eclectic garden. I love this stamp set because one, you don't have to color with pencils or markers or anything. You can just use these splotches and put them in a stamp pad. So for example, take this splotch, flip it over and just stamp it on top of the leaves once you've stamped it. Um, same thing for this one here. You can splotch it right over top of that artichoke. So there you go. But what I like about these um, lined images is that you can apply coloring techniques. So the Eclectic Garden is a great all season one. I really like it. I'm also using the um, stylish shape dies. I'm using the two largest squares for my card today. So our card is a very simple open fold card. Basically all I did, and of course here I am using Mossy Meadow again, you guys, because I just love Mossy Meadow. It's that time of year. Anyway, this is a standard five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. And then I scored at two and an eighth inch. And there I go and folded it back, okay? And now I have two pieces of this beautiful designer series paper. You might not know where this designer series paper is from unless you were paying attention during celebration. This is the wonderful world celebration designer series paper pack, which was the level two celebration. This paper is gorgeous. It has the Orchid Oasis. That color is just fantastic, isn't it? It's so pretty. But I'll share with you some of these papers because they're just, look at that one, how large and beautiful those flowers are. And that, that's just that Orchid Oasis, but there's the page I'm using today because it's so, so pretty. And then we have that. Whoops. And then that. There's two of each. This is such a pretty little page right here. There's some sweet sorbet in this um, designer series pack. And the stamp set that came with that was the Wonderful World. So this was a level two celebration. You might remember that. Hey, Becky. Um, now I have an extra one of these and so that's going to be part of my September giveaways for people who are placing those minimum $30 orders using that host code there on my online store. It's also going to be a mystery hostess party and right now the hostess dollars are up to about $46. Which you guys, there's not many people have, who have placed orders so uh, the chances of getting mystery hostess are really great. So this wonderful world set too, it doesn't have any sentiments, but you know, it could be really great to use. Let me see if I can, this one here, charming sentiments. Now this charming sentiments is really great. It has um, sentiments for all sorts of um, kind of celebrations, right? And thank yous, but what's really neat about the charming sentiments is that, am I, why does that look, that looks a little uh, wonky to me. I'm gonna try to focus a little better here. Yes, no, wait a minute. We'll try. I just feel like it's, it's very fuzzy and choppy. Yeah, that paper, mm-hmm. But here are these dies, which do automatic shadows when you die cut them out. So for example, let's take this one here, wishing you the happiest birthdays. This die right here goes right around it and cuts it out. And it looks like you have an extra shadow around it already. So it's really cool. And then it has some extra little things for candle and presents and hearts and stars. It's really, really great. So I am so excited to play with this Charming Sentiments and start using it on a lot of my projects. When you know you just want, you want to have that sentiment, but you don't necessarily want a whole nother layer behind it. This kind of automatically does that for you. So that would be a great pairing with this. So 
I have an extra one of those that's part of my giveaways. So next Wednesday, you guys, is going to be the September giveaways. Um, I'll be giving away some things for um, prizes for people who have placed those orders, but I'll also be making cards. And so, you know, it's all good. So now on this particular card, I'm using the watercolor pencils. And then I'll also be using um, a blender pen to smooth my colors. So I am using thick basic white. You can also use shimmery white. Shimmery white's really nice. Thick basic white's just gonna hold up better. It's gonna um, not soak through the paper so quick, okay? Now these particular strips I cut at one and 15 sixteenths, one little tick before two. <laughs> um, for my panel so it would just have a really nice edge around it so let's go ahead and glue this down yeah this paper is so beautiful the colors are just so nice and I think I really like that some of it goes so well with these deeper cardstock colors you know and isn't it amazing how how the colors match exactly this is mossy meadow cardstock and that paper it has mossy meadow so that one's going to get glued on that flap. I'm going to move this over so I'm not so much in that light. And this one's going to reverse. I hate to cover this up. It's so beautiful, but that's why I used it on the first panel. And that one's going to go right in here. Make sure I line up the top and bottom. There we are. And I'm going to go ahead and do the inside of the card quickly here. Now, Stays On and I are not the best of friends. Let me tell you why. Also, it always comes with this little thing here. Get a big glue dot, stick it there, and then stick this down so you don't have to always take it on and off. I just haven't done that yet. You want to make sure with your Stays On that you get it really inked up well, 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 well. You also, when you stamp, you're going to want to hold it there, count to three, count to five, and pull it off. That is beautiful. Sometimes it likes to stick on the photopolymer and it doesn't come off real well. Now, I already die cut out my second largest um, square here and I know I always say stamp and then die cut well I wanted to just reduce some of our time not that I don't want to be with you guys but do you really need to see me um, do that okay and now I am going to do this on the diamond want to make sure I get the beak and everything so his little tail might be off just a little bit Close up your stays on pad whenever you're not using it because it is a solvent based ink and it does dry quickly. Did you hear that? It kind of sticks. And so you can see a little bit here is not as dark as it could be, but that's okay by me. All right. Okay. So I am going to pull out my watercolor pencils. Stampin' Up! watercolor pencils are really great. Here's another container here that I have because I have a lot of them. But they come in a package like this and they have two different assortments. This is assortment two here. There's probably some assortment one in here. And these are blender pens. Stampin' Up! blender pens have two ends on them. And you think to yourself, well, why are they double-ended? Well, it's really great when you're working with multiple colors you can just flip it around and use it for the other color easily, okay? All right, now let's see what greens I have in here. You know, I think I might just open up this package back up, you guys. It just seems easier for me to access and see what I'm doing. It has a lot of the same things in it, so I'll just use this. And I'll grab this. I think this is um, Old Olive actually now i want you to notice when i am using hey jolene when i am using uh, watercolor pencils this is what i love about it i do not color everything i do a couple of dark splotches just on each leaf do you notice i'm not hardly doing anything on them just splotching you see how splotch just splotchy lines that's it 
And that's what I love. I am not a great colorer. And now when I come in with my blending pen, you can see how that liquid in the blending pen is pulling the watercolor pencil and it's smoothing it all around. It's already giving some darker and lighter areas because where I did the splotch, it's pulling the color from there. Some leaves can be a little lighter, some can be a little darker. And when it's dry, I can go back and make something a little darker if I want. And now look at those leaves. I just did a couple of scratchy in each of the leaves and now they are smooth and beautiful. You guys, I'm gonna turn that light down just a little bit more. I still feel like it's a little too bright. It's like, geez, opaque. We don't see our colors better when I have it a little less. There we go. And now, like I said, I could go back with that pencil. It's probably not um, totally dry, but that's okay. I can darken up these ones that are kind of underneath, give a little more dimension. And there we are, that's really nice. Okay, I'm gonna bring my brown in here for the branch and I'm simply gonna draw a line. That's all I need to do. Now, that blending pen I used, I'm just gonna drag it on the mat a little bit just to make sure I don't have any of that green left on it. And it's so cool that it just blends it all fills it in and makes it look beautiful. So now I'll just drag that on there a little bit. It's just a fluid. Do I know what the fluid is? Not at all. I'm going to go ahead and give the beak of this bird just a little smidge of black. And there we are, it's black. And I'm gonna give his eye black. Now, my bird itself, I'm going to come in with this, uh, you can't believe it, it's Calypso Coral, but it actually looks pink to me, and I guess Calypso Coral is a little. Now, I'm just going to give it a soft coloring like I'm coloring with a pencil. Kind of filled it in a bit, but you can see all these lines and everything from the color pencil. That's one thing about color pencils that really bother me, but then when I add the blending pen to it, it bleeds out that watercolor pencil and smooths it all right out. And now you can't even see any of those brush stroke lines from my pencil. It is so great. I'm gonna just, one more on the light here. There we go, all right. Now I want this to be a little darker with him and I want him to be brighter. So I'm gonna come in with this darker uh, Melon Mambo. Remember I told you in this paper, Melon Mambo is a color in the designer series paper. So notice I'm not coloring the whole thing on him because I don't want it to be super dark. I'm just giving some lines. Now when I come in, I'll bleed out all this color and I can fill in all this area and it's gonna smooth it for me. Now, the longer you are on your cardstock with this fluid, it is going to really wet the fibers of your cardstock. And if you get it too wet, it's going to pull and pill up your cardstock. So this is the thick basic white but it can do that, you gotta be careful. Now I see I have a little bit of white still in here, so I'm gonna come back in here, give a little give a little shadowing over here to this guy, and I'm not gonna use my blending pen to, to do anything with that. So there's my little bird, he's so cute. So cute. All right, I'm gonna attach this. 
Um, cardstock that works best for using your watercolor pencils is the thick basic white. I would suggest using shimmer white, shimmery white. Hey Sherry, thank you. Yeah, shimmery white's really great because it has, you know, it has a little bit of that texture shimmer on it and so stuff won't bleed through it. Thick basic white, as you're using your blender pens, you can, in fact, you might see my little birdie right up in here. He's starting to get a little pilly of that cardstock. And so I just need to be careful a little bit on that. I wouldn't go back over that now um, anymore with it, it kind of wet. But um, yeah, shimmery white is great um, for any type of your coloring techniques. Hey, Kathleen. Oh, you never think to use the pencils? I really like the pencils a lot because I like that I can just scribble a little bit and then it can just make it so pretty when I use it. So, you know, I'm just kind of spoiled that way that I just, I don't know. I'm not a great coloring person, but watercolor pencils make me look like I am phenomenal and I love it. So maybe maybe for my make a card group this this time I will do something with watercolor pencils. And now this is going to be just like so. And he is going to come like this. And what's great is he covers up what's sticking out here, right? So I am only going to put adhesive. Now this is where tear and tape might be a great choice or stamp and seal plus but you know what stamp and seal is going to do just fine for me i'm lining up my top and the bottom and just pressing down it's not going to hurt it because i'm going to be opening it this way but look at how don't those colors just go so phenomenally i think that is my melon mambo right in there and this calypso coral looks like the lighter ones here but that's not calypso coral that's just lighter melon mambo just different differing degrees of it all right and then I have some little gems I am using these iridescent rhinestone basic jewels I don't even know if they're current or not but as you can see I've liked them a lot because <laughs> I have used them a lot so I am gonna put because this needs some blingy bling I am going to put one right here at the tip. Then I'm going to put a second one right next to it, right there. And I'm gonna put another one right here, just because I think that's so pretty. I think I need a little more over here with something. I'm gonna take one just a little bit bigger and it's just gonna pop right over in here. And there we are. So now just think about this card. Take the Eclectic Garden and you can do one with the thanks so much. You can actually do that one with the thanks so much right here on the outside. And then on the inside, I just don't know what I would I'd do without you. You could do this guy, you could do that guy. I mean, any of them could go right in that center. So it's just a focused here it is designer series paper and then I love when you open it up you get that highlight of that yellow it's so great sorry I go out of the window <laughs> have you ever used gamsole it's on my list of craft stuff to get because I love coloring oh no I don't know what gamsole is Sherry so there's card number one this is a sample that I did earlier. They look almost exactly the same. This one has a little more blue because that's the thing with watercolor pencils, you guys. Notice how I have a little like coming out of the lines. That's what watercoloring is supposed to be, right? You have it kind of blurry and coming off the lines. So there you go. That was a good one. You know, you're just letting that designer series paper be the star but then adding just a little technique. So yeah, thick basic white cardstock or shimmery white for your watercolor pencils and blender pens. Really important. 
All right. I think next, you guys, we're kind of going to go a little on the wild side. What do you think? <laughs> going to go on the wild side. It's time for our little elephant parade, you guys. Look at how cute these guys are. These guys are really great for your blending pen, uh, uh, stampin' up, um, uh, Stampin' Blends, sorry. Um, Stampin' Blends are really great. You know, your watercolor pencils would be really good for this too because it's not too large of images. I think when the images get larger, you really don't want to use your watercolor pencils. Um, I think using your Stampin' Blends is much better um, because it's just, it um, just does some wonderful, wonderful things. Now, our little elephant here is I'm going to be using our vellum lovely layers you know i was really excited when i got this package because i thought oh look how cool these are aren't these cool i've got tropics i've got dots i've got this uh landscape then there's circles and the circles are fun and then all of a sudden i get blank vellum And I'm like, wait, what? Did something happen? And then I was kind of like, kind of bummed. But then I went, you know what? I get it. This is just a, a like a $5.95, something like that package. And so I understand why all of them aren't. And you know what? When you already have vellum cut like that for you as a layer, yeah, great. I'll take it. So yeah. So that is the lovely layers. It comes in a bundle with the layer, what is that called? What are you called? Oh, I think it's in the bottom drawer here. Oh, never mind. It's something layers, but it has a lot of the same as that right there. But okay, let's go, Mary. Stop blabbing. Okay. Now, I am using a collection of Stampin' Blends. Now, that's what I want to tell you on Stampin' Blends. You have a light and you have a dark partner. You don't always have to use the light and the dark partner together. Like these actually don't go together. This is a light basic black and this is a dark balmy blue, okay? So you can use them as light and dark if you want differing tones of the same color and you wanna blend out those lines, um, but you don't have to. I mean, I use my Stampin' Blends often and not to blend the colors. Hey Betty, welcome. Keeping track of my names here because I have a little couple giveaways tonight. Because I haven't in a little while, have I? Okay. Now, what we're going to use with this is I have... What do I have? I have a piece of basic gray cut at 4 and a quarter by 11, scored at 5 and a half. Because that's going to open this way. It could open that way, but that's not the way it's going. Then I have my white for the inside. And you guys, I have one of the layering pieces. Now this layering piece is four, um, is by, is three and three quarters by five. So you can do one more layer of the four and a quarter by five and a quarter that goes on. And so now you have three layers, but isn't that pretty? So then you guys, this card kind of started coming to my brain because of this. Remember when I cut out the square for the bird in this card? Um, I have this perfect like window piece and thought, oh, okay, I can add that to this card. And then what I did, you guys, is I already stamped out some of my little guys and I already used my Stampin' Blends and I colored. Now, look at my leaves, you guys. Aren't they pretty? And they have all those tones of green. My little elephant, he's got some shadier, darker parts and lighter parts. And look at the cute little mouse. Now, the cute little mouse does not have really any differing tones of his fur because I didn't use, I just colored him with the light basic gray and then the pink that I had. I didn't give him any shading. But I'm gonna color this elephant 
this leaf and the balloon for you. I'm not sure how this card's going together yet, but I am sure about one thing. I am going to put the green layer and the vellum down because I know that's where they're gonna go. I didn't know how much, how many characters I wanted on this card. I wasn't quite sure, so I thought, you know, I'm gonna do out those guys, but you would not want to watch me. Now, when it comes to your vellum and putting it down on your card, think about putting some of your tape on the dark part where the leaves are, okay? You just need a tiny little bit, and then, whoops, I didn't get any right there. Vellum is notorious for showing things, but you can't really see where I've put it behind, on where the black is. The other thing is I want to think about where is this going to go because I can put a little extra tape right there. And there we go. And so now I'll put that down, and you probably will say, where is that tape? You might be able to see. No, look at that, you guys. You can't even see where I put the tape. Ha, that's awesome. And then this is going to go here. It's going to be raised up with dimensionals. And that's as far as that card goes right now. So let's get into our summer cut. And look at the dies, you guys. This is so cute. Okay, let's talk about our leaf. So I am using um, dark granny green and light granny green. And what I like to do is I like to start with the dark. And I think about where is the light going to be the darkest? Well, it's going to be on anything that's underneath something else. So this one is going to cast a lot of shadows. This one too is going to be dark. And then I'm just going to give this guy where they're kind of meeting together a little bit of darkness. And that's it. Then I'm going to grab the light granny green and I'm going to come in now and start working to blend in. You want to move kind of quickly because that dark stamp and blend will dry up. Because if you want to do it with to blend it, you need to do it when that darker color is still wet. And then there you see I have a leaf now that's got different shadings in there already. Just like so. And it's interesting, it looks a little more harsh on um, on the screen that's interesting <laughs> all right so let's talk about this balloon i brought in yellow i thought yellow would be a cute addition i have dark daffodil delight and light daffodil delight now you're going to think well there's not a whole lot we're going to do here but i am going to give this balloon a little bit of the dark daffodil delight over here Because if you see balloons, you know this little line that's up here, that is for where the light is hitting. So now I'm gonna come in with the light and I wanna blend out that line a little bit. I wanna go right over that. And then I'll just come over here lightly. And I'm gonna bring that dark in just a little bit more here. And I'll come back over with that light. And there's my balloon. Something you might notice about Stampin' Blends, this is thick basic white cardstock, I should have said that. But notice how that Stampin' Blend will bleed outside those lines. That's something that you need to know. Uh, depending upon how really wet that Stampin' Blend is, it might bleed out a little bit, and so you wanna kinda watch that. It didn't really do that with my leaves, and it didn't really do that with my elephant, so I'm not sure. It's just maybe these blends are just so brand new that they bled a little bit. Uh, shimmery White is a good alternative for that uh, because it can hold it a little more, and you might have noticed I have the Memento ink pad out here because I didn't stamp anything, I didn't tell you that. When you use Stampin' Blends, you need to use the Memento ink, okay? Can you use the Stazon ink with um, Stampin' Blends? I haven't tried, but I do know the Stampin' Blends, because they are solvent-based and alcohol-based, they will eat up the Stazon ink, so. 
All right, let's talk about a little elephant here. I'm using the dark gray granite, and he's going to be dark under his chin, okay? He's also going to have a little bit of dark happening down in here, and all of his little lines I'm going to give, and his little forehead, and I want his outside of his ears to be. Now you can use the pen part. It is a dual tipped marker. <laughs> I tend I tend not to use that very much. I don't know why. And then I'm coming in with the light gray granite and I'm just going to color in right over top of that. I'm trying to blend those colors together. I don't want those harsh lines. And when you are doing a small area, it works out really great because that other darker blend doesn't have time to dry and so then you can blend out those lines. If you are doing a large flower, you would want to do small parts of it um, if you want to blend out those lines. Go around his eyes here. The one thing that's so nice about the Stampin' Blends, it will smooth out what you do. It's just amazing to me how it just smooths it right out. Now I'm not sure if you can still see that shadowy part here. So I can go back in and give him a little more shadow through here. What that shadow also does is it gives more of a 3D effect to the elephant. Oh, he's so cute. And I left a little bit of lightness right here on his forehead. I didn't quite go over that as much. So then I have this pink, and what pink do I have? Oh, I have dark pink pirouette. I used the dark. It was the only pink I had that I could just grab. But I like it. It's kind of a salmon-y kind of pink. But aren't those pink accents just so adorable? Now, they need some colored eyes, and now I am going to use the pen tip, you guys. I'm going to give the elephants blue eyes because they're so darn cute. All right, and let's give that mouse a little bit of shading, shall we? He's so small, I am going to use the pen part. I'm gonna give him a little shading under his chin here, and a little bit there. There, so now he's got a little line of shading in there, you can see that. All right, so Memento Ink Stampin' Blends. It's great. Stampin' Blends are really great for a little bit larger pe larger pieces, florals, things like that. Watercolor pencils would be also great for these guys. All right. So now I want you to see in here, you also have all of the um, outline dies for the elephant and the leaves and the mouse, the balloon. But you also have these little peanuts. You've got some bows. You have these um, grass pieces that you can just do and cut with cardstock and you get a couple of them. So that was something I was thinking about as well. All right, so now you guys know I gotta bring up my mini because I gotta die cut and decide what I'm doing, right? So. The mini machine is our friend. Let's start with our balloon. I think I'm gonna use the balloon. And what's nice is with me using the balloon here, it will, yeah, like I'm gonna see that. There is for the, the string of the balloon, there's a dot right here that I'm supposed to look through and line up. Do you think I'm gonna look through and line that up, you guys? Probably not. Now, I can do a leaf at the same time. Can I? Can I, though? We'll see. This is where washi tape is your friend as well, if you're trying to do more than one at a time. But I think I got this. Don't fail me now, machine. Don't fail me now. And I'm coming back. I don't want to bend my cardstock that has my cute little guys. All right, so yeah, 
my my balloon I did not do very well with my string but you know what I can always use a black marker on that not too worried about that <laughs> there's my beautiful leaf we'll do our leaf and our elephant this leaf lines up really great with the die and it's our walking elephant with his trunk going up. He's really cute. I kind of have an idea for him. Oh, I didn't do their um I didn't do their little um, hooves. I've got to do their hooves. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. I'll just hold that sandwich together until all of those are catching underneath that thing. All right. And there's my little elephant. I got a little excess, I think, of the white there, but that's a great thing about scissors. I could trim that if I want. I don't mind the white. I think the white's kind of a neat order. All right. I've got one more leaf. I've got the mouse. And the other cute elephant. They're so cute. I'm going to tear this off because the... I'm going to turn this over too. The machine does not... Not that. Um, does not like a lot of length past that way. If you know what I mean. You know, this is hard when you're sitting down. <laughs> I could be standing up, couldn't I? Well, why not, right? And this guy. Oh, yes, you guys need your hooves done. You definitely need your hooves done. Is that about right? I think that's about right. And the mouse. Can I do all three, you guys? Oh my gosh. Who's putting their bets in? Now, this mouse also has a little dot. I knocked my, oh, you know what? I don't know if I can. Yes, I can. No, I can't. I can't do my mouse because my elephant is knocking into him. Such a shame. And I think we're gonna need the mouse. Because I think that mouse just makes it. Now this little elephant had hair on his head, so I hope, I hope we still have his hair. <laughs> oh, it is so nice being back here with you guys too. So that's interesting. This little guy has this part right here that's not not cut out. I wonder if that's supposed to be cut out. Doesn't look like it, huh? Interesting. That die doesn't have that. Okay, so little mouse, are you going to make me stand up? Because you have a, a tail that I have to line up. Yep, looks like I'm lined up. That just happened. If he stayed where he was supposed to. With him being such a little guy, you know, you just don't know. All right, so now you got to sit there and watch me do a whole bunch of die cutting. How'd the mouse turn out? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, but how cute is that? Hello. No way. Oh, my gosh. It was worth it cutting all that out. Okay, so what do you do when you didn't quite line up the stem of your balloon? Not a problem. You grab that black. Is this my black? Nope, that's the gray. Is this the black? Light basic black. And you simply give the balloon. Oh, that's a thick string. I don't think I like that. That's all right. OK. And then, let's get these guys back in, because I do not want to lose any of these. That would not be fun. Mouse. 
balloon. Let's go in your pouch. I don't know, those peanuts could be awfully fun. <laughs> okay. Now, my thinking was that I could take these green little leaves and put them all along here. Put all three of them, like here, here, and then this one here on top, because that's cute, isn't it? And then this little guy would be here. The little mouse could be over here. He'd be holding the balloon, which I'm not too thrilled about my balloon. Just saying. And then I thought this little guy could be right here. What do you guys think? Too much? Not too much? Oh, hey, Cindy, sorry. Well, what do you guys think? It's kind of almost like, did I really need, if I'm going to put him here, right, those leaves, he's kind of blocking, so maybe I don't need all these. Okay, so let's just do this. I know he's going here, okay, and he is not standing up with dimensionals. He's going right in that center. This, on the other hand, is getting dimensionals. Now, this is where I'm going to come along and I am going to get some triangles of my dimensionals. I could say I could get my mini dimensionals, but that's just something else I have to go grab, <laughs> right? So why? The only issue is the sides. So I'm going to do one more here. And then I got this. I'm going to come along right up the edge with a thin, thin line. Cut it in half. Take off the sticky. Put it right along here. When you take off that thin, thin edge off your dimensionals, you get a super skinny, where'd the other one go? Oh no, you guys, where'd the other one go? Oh, way over here, wow. <laughs> you just get this really skinny piece, which is perfect, to go right in here. Now I also could have actually had a wider piece, right? But I'm using it because it was the piece that came out of my die cutting of my first card. So it's waste not, want not. You know, whenever you die cut, use that die cut piece for something else. There's usually always something you can do. So think about centering when you are gonna die cut something out because that piece that you're left with, with that shape out of it, could be used for something. All right, so this is going right here because he's sitting there. At center, center. Thank you. And it's raised up. So cute. I'm going to put two of these leaves down because that other little elephant's going to be there. So that's going to be there. This is going to be here. I think I'll have it going like that. And then this little elephant going to be here. Maybe I'll have this leaf down here. And he's walking through. No, that looks funny. I'll just have him down here like he's enjoying the leaves. Oh 
Oh my gosh, you guys, this is getting too cute. Little Mouse. I think Little Mouse will be right here. He'll be holding the balloon. I think I want it to come up a little higher like that. Yep, because I want the balloon is actually going to be on a dimensional. Just grabbed a whole other dimensional that I pack I did not need. Just forgive my black. I should have done the gray granite. The blackness of the <laughs> the balloon. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Uh, and I need a little liquid glue right here because I'm sorry but I do not want that well get on it please stay there stay stay oh it wants to give me trouble does it stay little mouse you need some liquid glue too because You are going to be here with the balloon. Oh my goodness. And he needs a dimensional underneath him. <clears throat> because the window is So there we go. So he's going to stand up underneath here and not sag down. Okay, that that is too cute. Hello, you guys, what do you think so far? This part right here, I am not too thrilled with that. I might, ah, that needs to get cut off or something. Oh, you know what, you guys, they didn't get their little, they didn't get their little hooves colored in. So, Memento Ink with Stampin' Blends. This tail also didn't cut colored it. You can't use stays on because the stamp and write markers, I mean the stamp and blends will eat the ink of the stays on. Oh, that is so cute, you guys. So so cute. This little leaf's gonna go inside on the bottom because we can't waste it. There's that. Now, sorry, I don't like this mess. Now, 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 let's come back over here. Because I want to have a stamp right here, but these are all kind of too big. Friends forever, I don't think that'll fit. Let's see. Oh, it does. Okay, got it. Friends forever, we'll use our Memento ink. And you know what, I already put this up on I think I can do it, you guys. I already put it up on dimensionals. Big mistake, right, if I want to stamp on it? But I think I can do it. You ready? You ready? Let's do it. <laughs> One, two, three, go. Yes! It worked! Friends forever. Love it, love it, love it. Oh my gosh, you guys, that turned out so cute. Whoa, I didn't know the cuteness was going to be that much. I'm just, I'm just tickled. Friends forever. I need something else to go, some other sentiment to go inside there, but I will find it. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. I don't even notice that balloon string. I think because that tropical leaf vellum is behind there. And the only thing that's bothering me right now is this right here. I might have to pull him off and cut that out. I, I don't think I like that. It's just really show it. Does that bother you guys? Are you seeing that? Oh, I gotta scroll down, you guys. New comments. Oh, Kathleen's back, yay. Oh, thanks, B. Yeah, I put the on the inside. <laughs> the lead. Oh my gosh, you guys, I, oh wow. I'm so glad I, I did some of those pre and colored them and stuff because I was thinking about how I might use them. And look at how we use them. Oh, okay. We have to move on. We have to move on. We still have water coloring. You guys know water coloring. 
You know, watercoloring is really difficult for a lot of people. It takes a lot of time to play with it, to work with it. And I would never do watercoloring um, on watercolor paper when I'm starting out. I would not do it. It's just too, um, it's too difficult because people are always afraid of the amount of water that you need to use when you are doing watercoloring with watercolor paper. When you use watercolor paper, you have to really douse your watercolor paper with water. And a lot of people are afraid of that. And so it takes a lot of practice. So I'm gonna show you how to do watercoloring really, really easily with, um, with aqua painters that you would use with watercoloring. With those aqua painters, we're gonna use the Stampin' Up um, ink pads. And we're gonna use shimmery white cardstock. Shimmery white cardstock is gonna give you a little more control and allow you to have the amount of water that you need. Um, and shimmery white will kind of hold that. So for this card today, I'm using these split layers uh, with you. I've already die cut out one of the layers, this one right here, and I just wanna show you how you would do that with a piece of cardstock. It's really easy, and I would suggest using the adhesive sheets on half of it so that when you die cut it out, you can just already have it with adhesive on it. But I'm using shimmery white, and what you would do, oh, that light is glowing on the stamp set. You would just take it out and you would decide how much of a border do you want? I would never come right to this corner edge. You always want to give a bit of a border. So you see, that's what I did here. I came down just about a cool quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch on either side. You go ahead and you lay it down. You might want to use a little washi tape to make sure you have it straight. And then you just run it through your die, die cut machine. You're going to want to go back and forth a couple of times. Um, you didn't want to do that a couple of times in order for all of these things to get poked out. And they will, but if you just roll through one time, it might not cut out all of those little pieces. Okay? So that's called the split card textures. Um, now, when you do the split card textures, where do I have it? Oh, yes. When you take out those pieces, you're going to have a whole bunch of pieces these little pieces that all come out of these spaces. Guess what? Save them, put them in a little container. Oops, you can put them in a shaker card or something. So just a tip there. So we are using the Apple Harvest stamp set. And then do you see the dies? Now when Stampin' Up! came out with this Apple Harvest stamp set, it had no dies. And I'm like, eh, I like it so much, but there's no dies. I'm going to have to do just a circle or an oval or a, I'm not cutting all that out. I do not cut well. I'm left-handed in a right-handed world, okay? <laughs> That's what my mom always said. Um, but look at these. Then they came out with the dies for the Perfect Partners uh, promotion in September. So during the month of September, you could get these dies to go with it. And look at all this goodness. I love all these extra flower ones. Think about die cutting those out and layering on top of each other and all the leaf dies. You just put those down on green paper and get a whole bunch of leaves at once. I love it. So there are four of those flowers. There's these little fun doodads. They're such great things. I just love it. So I got the whole bundle in September when they said you could get, you know, the dies. Um, and so there's like one more week left on the perfect partners promotion. So think about if there's any of those things you have and that you need the dies for, or you want to just get the whole bundle. Um, that's what I did. So I do have a couple of my stamp and write markers. You will also need to be using the stays on pad. Uh, hold on a second. I need the stays on pad because we are water coloring with water. And remember I said that um, if you use the memento, it will wash away. 
So now I'm using our aqua painters. There's three different size when you get those. This big one right here, this will be your friend when you are using watercolor paper because you will ink this up really, uh, get this really, really wet, squeeze, 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 and do it all over your watercolor paper to get it really wet. We're not doing that today. I'm actually using my water uh, painting with um, this guy right here. So I have that die out because I'm going to want to die cut it out. Now, you guys, I'm doing a lot of talking, but do you know this designer series paper? Have you seen that? Okay, so I'm going to show you something. In the July to December mini catalog in the back on Hostess Rewards, there is this Celebrate Everything 12 by 12 designer series paper. You're getting 48 sheets of 12 by 12. There's 12 double-sided designs and you get four each. And you know, I, I don't know, I just didn't notice it much. I noticed the caroling mice because they're just so darn cute, right? But then they have samples here of all these little paper things they made. And this is the designer series paper and I love the ornaments, but I actually did order it with, um, you know, hostess dollars or what have you. Because when you shop as a demonstrator, you get hostess rewards. You know, it's just like, you know, shopping. And um, check this paper out. Now I'm just going to flip through a bit for you. But there's four each, and it's celebrate everything. So you can think about that. Celebrate everything. We've got just fun like you'd use for birthdays. Look at the celebrations. Fourth of July, maybe. Then look at this one, you guys. You know I love leaves. Look at this page. This page just reminds me of a fun, like, retro color. Oh, with the leaves. I love it. Then we've got just some designs. And then pumpkins and ghosts. Hello. I, I just hadn't even, you know, looked through it yet or anything. And then I was getting ready for watercoloring and was looking for something green. Yep. Stars. We've got presents because there is that beautiful ornaments. And then this is the piece that I'm using today with this green. But on the other side are all these fun trees. And they're black and white. We've got some more bursting celebration. And then just some lines and sparkles and the candy. This is just great. I love this bold black background. It's really fun. So anyway, when I opened this up, when I was getting ready for, for class, I just like was like amazed by all the funness. So I have a piece of this. This is sweet sorbet. What's very interesting about this sweet sorbet, it is, it's not, it's not really a pink pink, but it's not really red red either. So I'm like, hmm, <laughs> what color is that? And then on the inside, I have another piece of that designer series paper as my layer. And then a shimmery white piece cut at three and a half by four and three quarters. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to adhere this to my card. And it's going to get a little interesting because I did not use adhesive sheet, but I would actually put adhesive sheet on half of the back of the cardstock. Because these lines are way too thin for much of anything else. And I do not use the fine tip glue. I just can't get with that. Now this is the same size as this green piece here, which is the five and a quarter by four. It's gonna go right over top, just like that. I really liked having that little bit of dashed lines that kind of matched what's going on in that with that grid, right? Oh my gosh, you guys, it's 7.07. Oh. I know, I know. I just have such exciting things to share. I can't keep it in an hour. And I even did like most of my die cutting, except for, okay, the elephant parade. 
But my gosh, that elephant parade was so, so worth it. Now you guys thought I was going to go this way, didn't you? I'm not. I'm going this way. Because everybody goes this way with this die. The split, split cards don't mean you have to go this way. You can go this way, and I'm going this way. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and ink this puppy up and do our watercoloring. Now, you'll see that watercoloring, if you're starting off with it, it is definitely, definitely better to start with shimmery white paper so you can do a little more control. The stamp hasn't been used yet. Let's just hope. I'm coming way over to the edge. And I'm going to hold, 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 hold. <laughs> oh, see how nice that stays on does with shimmery white. It doesn't soak in and stick to that basic white cardstock. Mm. And the shimmery white's interesting because you can barely barely catch the shimmers. It's just such a faint, faint look. Now I decided to pull out the um, my Stampin' Write markers because I hadn't done anything coloring with the Stampin' Write markers, which are water-based. And so using the stays on is, is good. But I decided I didn't want to bring out a whole nother stamp pad. So I just brought the dark and light of the soft suede. Well, no, I have, what do I have here? I have crumb cake and soft suede. That's right, there are no light and darks of the colors. They're all their own color. So all of the colors Stampin' Up! has, they have a Stampin' Right marker. You can get this in a case and I think the case of all the colors is like $129. And they are great. I like using my um, Stampin' Right markers for coloring actually on the rubber of the stamps. You guys maybe have seen me do that. And I also really like doing it with small parts. Now, here we go. We are going to do some water coloring. You can push, 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 push and try to get ink on this lid. It's kind of hard to do. You can use your refill, put a couple drops of your refill in there, or you can just take your pad and stick some ink on your stamp pad. Okay? Patty, um, Patty at Patty Stamps had done that, and I'm like, well, I, I can do that too. I knew how to do that. <laughs> Ooh, there's stuff floating in here. That's weird. I don't like that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and squeeze my aqua painter to get some water to drip onto, drip onto here. And now when I start moving it around, you can see it's wet. And the wetter it gets, the lighter it is. And so now I'm going to just come in and start coloring. You just color lightly touch don't press down a lot I'm hardly pressing I'm just coloring now you're not seeing much detail of anything you're not seeing depth of color or anything right now I'm just going to lay down now you'll see oh I got you know do not squeeze your aqua painter while you're coloring just saying that you've got plenty of water just go around with it pick it up and then now it's just like a carrier of that water and you're just going to go around just drag it along if it feels like it's getting dry again I would not squeeze my aqua painter okay so now that's nice isn't it pretty it's smooth very nice but I want to give some depth. So now, with my aqua painter that's full of water, I am not going to squeeze anything. I'm just going to pick up this ink here that I have not put uh, water into. And I'm going to come back here now. And I'm not going to squeeze. I'm just going to go over those shaded lines. And give my apple 
the definitions. See that now? So then I'm going to come back here, going to pick it up where it was wet again, and I'm going to just come back in now. The shimmery white's had a little bit of time to dry, and I'm going to come over and just get that a little bit richer, but then you can still see the deepness of where I put that darker, that darker ink that I hadn't wet. I just picked it up from the, pe uh, the block. So now the apple's gotten darker a bit. And there we go. The only place that I squeezed water was onto the block with the ink. I didn't squeeze it when I was working it, okay? That's important to know. All right. So those are beautiful apples, isn't it? Now to clean my thing, I'm just gonna squeeze water out and just rub it along until the brush is clean. Now we have this mess. I'm just gonna take a wipe, baby wipe, or two, and I'm just gonna wipe it right off. Okay, and there we are. I'm gonna flip it over because now I am going to put my green down, but I'm gonna put some green here Okay, and this was pear pizzazz. Pear pizzazz is a little bit more earthy green, and then I have parakeet party. Parakeet party is another new color like sweet sorbet, and I apologize, but this isn't even opened yet. What? How are you not opened yet? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. The wrapping's on it so tight you wouldn't even know. Um, I just I'm worried that the parakeet party is going to come off just really. Okay, hello. Uh, really light and bright and summery, as you can see there. See the difference? I don't know if you can see the difference there, but one's much, that's much wetter and that's a bit darker. And I want that because I want a little bit of, of different difference is in the leaves. Okay, so I'm going to squeeze a little water here onto the block, squeeze a little water there onto the block. I'm going to go ahead and swirl. That's awfully wet. You can see how wet it is, so I'm not going to do any squeezing when I come on here. You're going to say, but that leaf looks awfully light. That's okay. The only way I'm going to get color is by coming back to here. When you squeeze your aqua painter, you're actually causing, oh my gosh, you guys, I missed an apple. You're actually causing your um, ink to get lighter because you're making it wetter. Yeah, I see an apple that I missed. Such a shame. He was sneaking around, hiding out, because notice I can just go back over it and it, it darkens up, okay? But I just give it a minute and then I go back to it. If you just go back over it right when it's wet, it's just going to get wetter, blob on you a bit, and you don't want that. So we want some of our leaves to be the pear pizzazz, the little more earthy, and I'm going to have it be ones that are kind of layered underneath, you noticed. This one I'm going to do just part of it with that color, see what happens. All right, okay. I don't have to worry about cleaning my aqua painter much with this. And now you can see the parakeet party is a brighter green. But it's going to blend nicely here. It's going to look good with the, the other color. The, the um, aqua painter is just going to glide right along. And I ha again, I haven't been squeezing my aqua painter. The only time I would need to squeeze is if I was trying to do an area and it was just not going, um, if it was kind of running out. Oh, 
that's nice. Some of those are kind of bright. That's nice, nice and bright. But I'm going to come back over here because I do want to kind of show that difference a bit. I'm going to get this one a little bit darker like the pear pizzazz. There we go. Very pretty, huh? Really pretty. Okay. And wipe this off because I'm sorry, but you guys, I missed a I missed my apple. Now I do need to get the green off here. We will have a icky apple. Is that a lot of green, huh? <laughs> I'm just right up on the tip of my aqua painter because I'm just trying to get that red apple, but I don't want to get the green leaf. And I just re recently painted it, and so you can see it's starting to bleed into my leaf because my leaf is not dry. So that's okay. When that does get dry, I'll go back over with green but I don't have to do that right now. Okay. That lid does not seem to fit that for some reason. Okay. Bye block. Okay. I'm going to cut around this a little bit because I am using my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And yes, you can use this with your die in the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. I just don't like to bring my big honkin' one up here on the table. It's just really hard for you to see. And I shouldn't say big honking one because I like my big machine a lot. Okay, let's find where this guy goes. Huh. It goes right here. How do I know that? Because there's the stem right there. Yes, that's right. Okay, so I actually wish I would have had this before school started because I would have done the cute apple because I like to send the kids um, that I do my virtual school stuff with, I like to send them a welcome back to school thing and that apple would have been perfect. Oh, I think I slipped. I think I slipped, you guys. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay. Set that aside. We're golden. I'm going to put the stamp pads away. I'm going to put that aside. Bring this back in. Give this guy some dimensionals. Yeah. So... Watercoloring with aqua painters are fabulous. You get three different sizes. Practice with the shimmery white cardstock. Get wet on your block with the ink and then take it to the And that's going to go just like that. And then this is going to go in here. This one. Come on, little elephant. You've got to come off of there. Thanks for hanging with me, you guys. And then, because you're using your stamp pads, you can bring out your Your 
images and use your stamp pad for more. <laughs> and then I was going to use your, um, well, I was going to use, thanks for being a friend on the outside. It's crooked, you guys. Oh my goodness. Do you have trouble getting your things on straight? I do. Okay. I do not need to use stays on for this because I'm not watercoloring anything with it. Well, almost straight. <laughs> oh, that is not straight at all. Oh my goodness. Oh well. And then I thought about some ribbon and stuff, and I decided, nah, I'm not going to use the ribbon stuff because I got some other great things. Okay. So I was thinking that my genial gems would be really good for this. These guys right here. I don't, I don't know if these are current at all. Not a clue. It's hard to keep up with embellishments and what's what's in and what's ooh what's in and what's not. What's neat about these gems is that they're kind of like a a soft succulent color. Kind of like that, but depending upon where you put them, they really um, take on different colors. All right, so we talked about the perfect partner stuff. Weekly deals, just again, there's lots of good ribbon stuff on there. And I said earlier with my um, washi tape here package, I wrapped a ribbon around it to keep them together. And this ribbon with several others of those in colors are on special with weekly deals. About a week left for my Mary's September giveaways opportunities to get mystery hostess, all the hostess benefits. And oh my goodness, you guys, we're not that far away from like getting a half off item too. Um, so that's great. And like I said, not a lot of people have put in orders, but people who have put in orders um, have put in pretty good amount of orders. And so that just benefits that hostess, whoever it's going to be. Exciting. Okay, let's see. This one, it's very simple, right? There's, it's not all uh, tons of things. It's really kind of focused here on our apples. That was watercolored. And then we had, oh my gosh, you guys, our little elephant parade, which was done with our Stampin' Blends. And then our watercolor pencils with our beautiful eclectic garden. Kind of a fun fold card there. I hope you liked those. But hey, I've got a couple of giveaways here tonight, you guys. Oh, let me go back here and just make sure. <laughs> it's getting close to your bedtime. I know, I know. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> I just want to make sure I got everybody here. Yep, yep, Sherry and Kathleen and, mm -hmm, and Becky and Linda and people might have gone and that's okay. Well, I've got this great little bag here, you guys. I don't know, you know this here. This is in the mini catalog. It's They're called the Stars Treat Bags, and they are really fun. What's really neat about them is they are like a waxy inside, and they're really sturdy. But I have all my numbers in here. I went back to just using numbers because, you know. All right, so let's see. I have got number. I don't have a 13. So let's see. 
Number six. Hey, Sherry, you are number six on my list of guests. And I have this really nice package of frayed gross grain ribbon. And I think it's a blushing bride. It's great for like, do you like the pink um, holidays, like Christmas pink and stuff? Pinks and purples, that would be great. So that's for Miss Sherry. I gotta write that on something. Where's my pen? Here it is, Sherry. All right, I also have a pa package of this bedazzled six by six. It is pretty awesome paper. It is just really cool. There's eight pieces in there. And that's gonna go to, ooh, number four, Carol. Carol, this is for you. Yay. And I have one more, you guys. Three cards, three prizes. I have lots of packages of this Sunshine and Rainbows. I think I really, really liked it. Um, yeah, it was a great, it's a great one. But little 48 sheets of goodness. And that's gonna go to Miss Becky, number nine, Becky White. Becky, I just sent something to you today too. <laughs> Those gems, I gotta put them together. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. So there are our three projects and our coloring things. And remember, we need to use certain inks for certain things when we are doing um, water coloring, always use stays on. Stays on for these two kinds of coloring, watercolor pencils and aqua painters. And then we use our memento ink pad for our Stampin' Blends. You can also use the memento for your Stampin' Write markers. It really isn't gonna hurt it very much. So anyway, oh, I didn't even have it on the thing anymore. <laughs> All right, you guys, it's been a lot of fun. Um, let me know what you'd like to do the next time for next week. What's something you want to see? Is there a technique? Is there a, you know, stamp set, you know, that you want to do? Okay. All right. Till next time, guys. Happy stamping.